Welcome to Electron Online, and here we have our third example of how to take a electrical circuit with resistors and, and reduce it to its equivalent resistance so it would be really easy to find the total current in the circuit. We're not going to worry about finding the total, the total current, we're simply going to be concerned with finding the equivalent resistance because that's sometimes the hardest part. And uh, sometimes they draw the circuit in such a way that you're not quite sure what to do with it. Is this a parallel circuit? Is this a series circuit? What's going on? And so there's some tricks in order that we can utilize in order to figure out how to simplify, how to find the equivalent circuit, the equivalent resistance. And so the way you do that is you look at here. So the current would start from the battery. It will go through this single resistor here. Notice that this, there's no choice but to go through this resistor. All the current must go through R1. Then we get to this junction right here. Now the current can go through this branch to this branch. It can go this way right there. But the way it's drawn doesn't really lend itself to really figuring out what's going on. So what you can do is you can say, well, notice that we have a corner right here. We have this junction right here. What we can say is that this is all really the same point right there. Consider that all the same junction. And then down here where you see where these two come together and where those three come together, you can say, well, really what you, th what you can think about is that these junctions right here are all really the same point on the circuit. From an electrical perspective, since there are no components anywhere in between, the potential anywhere along the circuit right here is all identical. Same over here, since there's no components anywhere here, the, the potential right here is all identical, and so this can be considered a single point on the circuit. So if we redraw it like that, we can make the circuit look like this instead. So we still have our battery. We have the resistor up there. Now what I'm going to do is draw a single junction that represents all three points right there. So like this, like this, and like that. Notice this point right here, let me use the same color, is represented by what I circled in red up above. That's the same point as this whole thing put together. Now we can put the three components below that. So we have one resistor here, we have another resistor there, we have a third resistor there. It looks more like the Zorro sign, but hey, that's okay. There we go, and then they all come together like this. And notice that this junction can be considered to be what I circled in green there. So now this looks like a very different circuit, but in actuality, it's the exact same one as before. No difference whatsoever. And we can put in the resistor value. So this is R1 equals 10 ohms. Here we have R2 equals 60 ohms. There is R3 equals 30 ohms. And finally, we have R4 equals 20 ohms. Now notice, now you can easily see that these three resistors are three resistors in parallel. That wasn't quite clear the way it was drawn there. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. So sometimes it's better to redraw the circuit and go, oh, now I realize that this is indeed a parallel set of resistors. Notice that when you have the current coming this way, the current can either go through the 60 ohm resistor and back to the battery. It can either go to the 30 ohm resistor back to the battery, or it can go to the 20 ohm resistor and back to the battery. So the current has three choices to get back to the battery. In each case, you only have to pass through one resistor, so that means it looks exactly like that. Now we can go ahead and simplify it. So the first thing we're going to do is combine these three. We're gonna call that a equivalent resistance for those three. So we have the battery, we have the resistor there, and a single equivalent resistor that now is going to replace these three. So let's call that resistor five. And this will still be resistor one, which is 10 ohms. And to find the equivalent resistance here, of course, we use the equation we use for parallel uh, resistors, 1 over R equivalent, in this case 1 over R5 equals 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. And so 1 over R5 is equal to 1 over 60 plus 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20. Now we get our calculator. And uh, matter of fact, you know, we don't even need a calculator for this one because notice that 30 fits into 60 evenly, so we can write 1 over R5. And let me do it like this so you can see a little bit more how that works. So we have 1 over 60 plus we multiply both the top and the bottom by 2, we get 2 over 60. We multiply both the top and the bottom by 3, we get 3 over 60. Like so. So now we have everything over a common denominator. So 1 over R5 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6 over 60. Whoop, I wrote 160. And so that would be 1 over 10. 
So since 1 over 5 is equal to 1 over 10, or 1 over R5, we can then say that R5 equals 10 ohms. That's the equivalent resistance of those three right here. So we'll write this equal to 10 ohms. Now finally, we can combine those two together, form a single resistor for that circuit. So right here, so we have one battery and a single resistor. So I'll call this R6. And notice since R1 and R5 are now in series, we simply have to add those together. So we can say that R6 is equal to R1 plus R5, which is 10 ohms plus 10 ohms, which is 20 ohms. That's a terrible looking ohm sign. Let me try that again. There, much better. And so we know now that the equivalent is, whoop, the equivalent circuit is 20 ohms. There we go. So it means that all these resistors can be replaced by a single 20 ohm resistor and the circuit will be exactly the same. And that's how we do that.